As we continue working through the book of Matthew, we're in chapter 6. And one thing that I really uh, like about with when you're studying the scriptures and things, uh, the scripture's written in such a way that it's like building blocks. And one way that I have a passion of preaching and, and teaching is with building blocks. I believe if we go and we try to uh, build it all at once, uh, we're going to miss some parts. But I believe in going small and doing a little at a time. And today that we're going to look at the model prayer, the Lord's uh, model for us to pray. But there's something I want you and I to catch. There's verses 1 through 4 happened last Sunday that we looked at. And think about that. Those verses talk about being a hypocrite. Those verses talk about putting on a show and, and saying one thing but doing another. Those verses talk about if you and I choose to do that, our awards are here on earth and not in heaven. But then you have to realize that Jesus is there in this setting and, he's, and his disciples now have come to him and they're like, Lord, how do we pray? Now, I don't know about you, but I can tell you I struggled a lot in school. And when we would get those worksheets passed out sometimes on our desk, uh, you could have math or you could have English. And y'all know I'm not good with English because I, I can't even speak it, much less do it. But here's the thing. It, it would show a sentence. And they would want you to break down the sentence. You know, well, where's the verb and the noun and all that other stuff? I don't know those words. But, but it would show the example and it showed one would be underlined or one would have a box around it or one would have something else. Well, you see, uh, I, I, I sometimes get real smart. <laughs> and, and what I do is I count those words. All right, one, two, the third word here is underlined. So in this sentence, I need to underline the third word. And the fifth or sixth word would have a box around it. So I would count. And need to say I never did good. <laughs> I wasn't as smart as I thought I was. But here's the thing. You say, Wes, why are you telling us this? See, those were examples in what to do. And Jesus, with the Lord's Prayer, was giving you and me an example. This doesn't have to become your prayer, my prayer. That, that, but the Lord says, look, here is a way that you pray. But he desires for you and me to pray with our words and with our heart. But he doesn't want you and me to pray and put on a show for others to hear or for others to pat us on the back. He wants us to share our hearts with him. And he gives us an example. Look at verse number nine. In verse nine, there's something that is taking place. There is a surrendering that is happening. It says here in verse nine, it says, pray then this. Our Father in heaven. You see, first thing he's doing is showing a surrender. He's showing us that, hey, we give honor, we give glory to our Father, not to no one else. And then the next part of this verse says, hallowed be thy name. It is saying that his name is holy. We just don't say God's name flippantly. We don't just say it out there like this. But we give it honor. We give it praise. You see, when you and I are to pray, and when we start our prayer, it has to start with giving God glory and honor. Not ourselves, not our circumstances, not anyone else. But to talk to the Father, you call upon Him. You give Him praise and honor. And there's a surrendering to that. Because you see, when you and I, we don't become boastful or about us, the opposite of that is humble. Surrendering. And that's what he's desiring from you and me by giving us this example. Look at the next verse. Next two, a uh, couple verses here. Look at verse 10. It says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. You see, he is showing us, we give him glory, we give him surrender. But there is a request that is happening. The request that is happening for you and me is that it's like heaven, that it's about his kingdom. And then he says, not our will be done, but yours. You see, when it's not about us, 
How many times have you ever prayed a prayer and it didn't work out the way you prayed? It probably didn't even work out the way you wanted it to at times. You might have even prayed a prayer about something and it went the way you sure didn't want it to go and you even got upset with God about it. You see, if you and I are really going to be men and women after God's own heart, we have to pray in such a way that we submit to Him, that we give Him glory and honor, and that we are truly meaning His will be done. Not ours. You see, the last part of this verse, it says, on earth as in heaven. See, he's saying, look, you and I are to pray in such a way that it's God's will to be done and we make earth like heaven. Because if we get out of the way and we let God do it, we let God move, we let God change things and we quit trying to micromanage it, we quit trying to do it on our own strength and our own understanding, guess what happens? God gets all the glory. God gets all the praise. God gets to touch it. And guess what that's starting to look like? Heaven. Heaven. When you and I get out of the way. Look at the next verse. Give us this day our daily bread. He's showing you and me that look, don't worry about tomorrow. Just worry about today. Just focus on today. He says, give us this day. He says, don't worry about tomorrow. You and I need to focus today. And what is something that we need? Food. He says, look, your needs are going to be met. If you focus upon me, you let me move, you let me work. He says, your needs are going to be met. When? It shows in that verse, daily. Not tomorrow, but today. Look at verse 12. Now these next couple of verses, I want you to truly pay attention to these verses. Now remember verses 1 through 8. And those verses we talked about a minute ago was talking about hypocrisy and was talking about, you know, giving ourselves glory and praise and, and all this. It was talking about the character of a person. But all of a sudden, in the Lord's Prayer that he gives us as an example, he talks about how we give God the praise and glory, how we focus upon him and we want his will to be done. And then we all of a sudden, we start realizing, Lord, I'm going to trust you to take care of my need today. But now, guess what happens in the prayer? There has to become an action on your part and my part. See, all of a sudden, this prayer has totally been pointed up toward heaven. Every ounce of that prayer was pointed toward heaven. Now, all of a sudden, God is turning this prayer back, pointing it to you and me. Check this out. And forgive us our debtors as we also forgive our debtors. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. He's saying, look, here's where that prayer's turned around. You and I have an obligation to forgive. That is an action you and I have to make. It is a choice. You can choose to live in misery and carry around grudges and hatred and anger and, and all that stuff and be just a miserable toad on a log. Or you can be a light for the kingdom of God. And this is how you become a light for the kingdom of God. You give him glory and praise and honor. You let his will be done. And all of a sudden you quit worrying about tomorrow. You focus on today. And then all of a sudden you realize he's asking you to do something after you've asked him to do something. He's asking you to forgive. Verse 13. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. All of a sudden, this prayer's went back. You have an action. Your action is to forgive. Now, you're back to the request, Lord. I have trouble forgiving. I have trouble letting go. What do you think he's talking about? Lead us not into temptation. Lord, I struggle with that anger. I struggle with that hurt. I struggle. Lord, I have this sin in my life and I'm struggling with it and I need to let it go. Lord, I got this in my life and it is pulling me away from you. You see, this verse is saying, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
It's like, Lord, help me. Help me with this struggle and deliver me from this. You see, all of a sudden, that prayer was straight to God, back straight to you to, to give away that sin. And now you are asking God, okay, Lord, I forgive. Lord, I let it go. But Lord, you know it's coming back. You know, so many times when you and I, we throw out forgiveness or we throw out letting go of something, it's like a boomerang. When I was real little, I was given a styrofoam boomerang. Oh, I thought I was going to be Crocodile Dundee and I could shoot, hit anything upside the head and it'd come right back to me. Well, we had this huge gully that we would put stuff in one day I said, I'm going to show how good I am with that boomerang. I'm going to throw it across the gully. It's coming back to me. I ain't seen that boomerang since. <laughs> you see, for you and me, that's got to be what happens. we got to throw out that forgiveness. we got to throw out the letting go of that sin, and we never need to see it again. You see, that's why this part of the prayer, the way the Lord has it written, is when you and I are willing to do something about the sin then we ask God, help me not to wrestle with that no more. Help me not to allow that to be a part of my life anymore. Help me deliver me from that. Look at the next couple of verses. It shows us here, it comes back. All of a sudden, the Lord asked us to forgive. Now we're asking him to all of a sudden keep us strong that we don't struggle with the temptation. And all of a sudden... He repeats it, what happened a few moments ago. Verse 14, he says, If you forgive others of their trespassings. And he said, look, if you do what I asked you to do about your sin, I, I'm going to help you. But there's got to be something you're going to have to do again. If you, if you. See, that action is for you and me. If you forgive others of their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. You see that four-letter word, your? Question. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now? If you're here this morning, you can say, yes, I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He is your God. If you're here this morning, you say, Wes, I've never had a personal relationship with God. I've never allowed him to be my personal God and my Savior. But here's the thing. He can't be your God in heaven until he becomes your personal God in your heart. And he's saying, look, if you get to a point and you're willing to forgive and you're willing to let him be your God, it says, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. You see, he backs it back up to that action he asked from us. You're not going to be forgiven unless you forgive those in whom do you wrong. And you forgive those who hurt you. Then all of a sudden in verse 15, there is something that he's telling us that is so neat. He's tying verse 14 and 15 together. But if you don't forgive... If you don't do this, you don't forgive their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. You see, if you're willing not to do something about that sin that he asked you about previous in this, this prayer, he's not going to deliver you from that evil because you've not confessed it to him. You've not taken it like that boomerang and thrown it out there and let it go. Here's what you've done. You've tried to make yourself feel good. You've tried to clear your conscience. You, you say, no, Lord, uh, you know this, whatever sin or, or hatred or anger I have in my life. Here it is, Lord. You see it, but I'm not giving it to you. You see it, but I'm holding on to it. You see, he said you and I are to forgive and to let it go. But so many times we just say, Lord, here it is. But you can't have it. And we never allow God to work in our lives because we never deal with the sin. 
I don't know about you, but I do know I have a lot of sin in my life. And there's no way on God's green earth that I can carry around my sins. And I know that I'm going to have to carry around those bags if I'm not willing to give them to God and to let them go. I know God's not going to forgive me unless I forgive others. And do you realize many times we think we're getting them back because we're holding on to it. You're hurting yourself. Half the time they might not even know you've got a problem with them. They're going on about life. But here you are in misery because you're carrying around a sin you weren't designed to carry around. God designed you and God designed me to walk in the light. He designed us to walk in freedom. He designed us to be disciple makers. How can we do that if we're walking around with things we weren't designed to do? How are you doing with that? Are you walking around today with things going on in your life that you weren't even designed to walk around with? If so, are you willing to let it go today? Our Father which is in heaven, how be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You see, those parts aren't going to happen if we don't forgive our debtors. See, God gave us this example, this prayer, and it's a mighty, mighty prayer. And it's a mighty example of an action that we're to do by giving him praise and glory. It's an action that you and I are to forgive, but it's an action from him that he'll deliver us from it if we're willing to do something about it. Let's pray. Father,